In the previous classes, we were talking about DC. DC means direct current and direct voltage, which means the voltage is constant and the current is constant. Beginning of next chapters, we will start talking about AC. AC means the voltage and the current are function of T, which means the voltage is not constant and the current is not constant. For DC, we didn't see any inductor or any capacitor. And we are calling inductors and capacitors energy storage elements because those are storing energy. So for DC, we didn't see them because the inductor was looking like a short circuit and the capacitor was looking like an open circuit. That's why you didn't see any inductor or any capacitor. And I'll show you why the inductor was looking like a short circuit and the capacitor was looking like an open circuit. I'll show you that and I'll prove it with you. We didn't see any inductor or any capacitor because we were talking about DC. But if we will start talking about AC, we are going to see the inductor and the capacitor. So we are going to talk about the inductor and the capacitor today. Today, probably I will cover only the inductor and next class I will talk about the capacitor. Why we are calling them energy storage elements? Because both of them are storing the energy. One of them, which is the inductor, is storing the energy in the formatting of magnetic flux. And the other one, which is the capacitor, which has two different plates, it's storing the energy as if like we have potential difference between the two different plates. The inductor is depending on the very simple rule that we studied in physics. If I have a coil and there is a current in that coil, there will be a magnetic flux around that coil. So imagine we have iron core and we have coil around that iron core. And there is a current here I, so I'm expecting there is a magnetic flux. And I can define the direction of the magnetic flux by the right hand rule. So if those are the direction of the current, then this guy will refer to the direction of the magnetic flux. Like what you are seeing, this coil is wound from the outer side. So this is the direction of the current and then going back and then front and back and front and so on. Are you seeing that? So if I have a current here, I'm expecting there is a magnetic flux. If you are going to continue in electrical department, you will study more about that in electromechanics, and you will study more about the electromagnetic circuit or the magnetic circuit. And what is the difference between the magnetic and the electric circuit? But right now we are talking about simple thing, which is if there is a current, there will be a magnetic flux around that coil. So this magnetic flux will create a certain amount of energy and this magnetic flux is represented by what we call phi so phi is representing the magnetic flux and there is a variable which is called flux linkage which is lambda and this lambda is equal to n times phi what's n it is the number of turns. And what's phi? It is the magnetic flux. So, lambda also is represented as a function of something called inductance multiplied by the current. L is representing the inductance 
and I is representing the current. And the unit for L is Henry. And we are using H to represent that or we prepare A. So L is represented by this symbol. If there is a current I, this guy is L. This is similar to what we studied in case of the resistor. If I have a current, there is a resistance. And there is a relation between the resistance. There is a relation between the resistance and the current. V is equal to I times R. Here, in case of the inductor, there is a relation between I and L. But actually, the voltage V is not equal to I times L, like in case of the resistor. V is equal to I times R. But here, V is equal to L dI by dt. So if there is a current I, there will be a voltage V. But V is equal to L dI by dt. From where we got that? We got that from Maxwell equation, which is called Faraday is low. which is one of Maxwell's equations. He said what? He said the voltage V is equal to D lambda by DT, which is equal to D lambda is equal to LI divided by DT, which is equal to L DI by dt. If we are talking about coil and we don't have moving parts, we are expecting L as constant. In electromechanics, you are going to study with us that L is not constant because we have rotating parts. If I have some contactors, if I have arm that will move to close a circuit or open the circuit, at that time, the inductance is not constant. But in our case, since we don't have rotating parts, we are talking about coil not moving. At that time, L is equal is constant. That's why I put L outside the derivative, which means V is equal to L di by dt. Also, I can say V is equal to N d phi by dt. And this is what we studied in physics. So the unit for L is Henry or Whipper per ampere. But generally speaking, we are using Henry to represent the units for the inductance L. Again, the voltage is equal to L di by dt. So what I need from that part is if I have a coil and there is a current I, there is an inductance L and there is a voltage across the coil V and V is equal to L di by dt. Again, I'm repeating L is constant because I'm not talking about moving parts. I'm talking about stationary machine or a stationary system. That's why I'm assuming L is constant. If you will study electromechanics, you will hear something else. So V is equal to L di by dt. If you would like to find the current I, we studied that we can find current I by using separable method because this is first order, right? Differential equation. I can find I by moving this guy to the other side, dt, and then find the integral for both sides. And by doing that, you can find the value of the current I. But right now we know that V is equal to L di by dt. Let us go back to what I said at the beginning of the class. We didn't hear a tool about the inductor or the capacitor. In the previous problems, right? We were dealing only with resistors. 
But why do they care about the background capacitor? I told you because the background case of DC looks like short circuit, right? Imagine I have a current which is constant. The first derivative for the current, the, the, the constant, which is the current, is equal to what? It's equal to zero. That's why the first derivative for I is equal to zero if I is constant, which means the voltage between that point and that point is equal to it is equal to zero. If I have a branch and its voltage is equal to zero, this branch looks like what? Short circuit. That's why I told you at the beginning for DC circuits, the inductor looks like a short circuit. And we have proved that right now. Because if you are talking about DC, the first derivative of I with respect to the time is equal to zero, which means V is equal to zero. That's why the inductor looks like a short circuit. What I need so far is to know the equation of the voltage across the inductor. V is equal to LDI by DT. If you still remember, I told you before that I have four quantities for the resistor. I have to know them. The first one is the voltage. V is equal to I multiplied by R. Do you still remember that equation? V is equal to I times R. This is in case of the resistor. And the second equation is I is equal to V over R. And the third equation is the power equation, which is equal to what? I times V or I square times R or V square over. And the last equation is. Which is number four. The last equation is. The energy equation and the energy is equal to what? Integral of PDT. I'm going to repeat talking about those four quantities in case of the inductor, and I'm going to repeat talking about those four quantities also in case of the capacitor. So I have four quantities. I would like you to know them for the resistor, the inductor, and the capacitor. And those four quantities, everything is depending on them. So the first quantity is the voltage. The voltage is equal to LDI by DT. We know it. Now, I would like to find the current in case of the inductor. So if you would like to find the current, we can find the current from this first order differential equation, right? By moving or by multiplying both sides by dt. At that time, I can say that VDT is equal to LDI. I can move this term in that side and this term to the other side, and I can write L di is equal to vdt. I can divide both sides by L, and I can say di equals 1 over L multiplied by vdt. We studied in mathematics that if you would like to find i, you have to find the integral for both sides. So I will try to find the integral for this guy and the integral for this guy. I told you that L is constant in our case, so I will say integral of this. This is in case of integral from I of T zero up to I of T. So this is from T zero to T. Based on that, the integral of di will be equal to i and then substitute by the limits of integral. I can say i of t minus i of t zero should be equal to one over L integral from t is equal to zero up to t for v dt. Based on that, I can say i of t is equal to 1 over L integral from T0 up to T for V dt, whereas V is function of T, plus I of T0. And this will be 
the equation for the current. So the current is equal to 1 over L integral of V dt plus the initial current. If T0 is equal to 0, at that time it will be I of 0. And the integral will be from 0 up to T. It's depending on the problem itself. If T0 is equal to 5, for example, millisecond, I will find I of 5 millisecond, and the integral will be from 5 milliseconds up to T. It's depending on the initial value, which is depending on the initial time. Any question for that? So far, I have two equations. The first equation is the equation of the voltage, which is equal to L di by dt, and the equation of the current, which is 1 over L integral of V dt plus the initial current. The third equation, which is what? The power equation, right? So the power is equal to what? It's equal to V times I, which is equal to V multiplied by I. What's V? Actually, V is equal to L di by dt. So it will be L di by dt. Multiplied by I. So I can say the power is equal to Li di by dt. And this is the equation for the power. The last equation, which is the equation of the energy. So I can say the energy dw by dt or the work done is equal to P, or I can say W is equal to integral of P dt. So this term is equal to L I di by dt. dW by dt is equal to the power, or I can say the energy is equal to integral of P dt. So based on that, I can say that dW is equal to L multiplied by I di. If you try to compare between those two. So, based on that, I can find the integral for both sides. And if I assume that the initial energy is equal to zero. If I assume that the initial energy is equal to zero, so the integral for dW is equal to W minus W of zero. W at any time minus W of zero. If I assume the initial energy is equal to zero, at that time I can say W is equal to, and if I assumed here uh, I of zero is equal to zero, I can say W is equal to half L I square. So what I need to know, I need to know four equations. I don't need to know all of these details that I have already derived them for you. What I need to know, I need to know four different things. Number one, if I have a coil here, and I have a current in the coil, there is a voltage across the coil V, and V is equal to L di by dt. This is the first equation. The second equation, I of t is equal to 1 over L integral of V dt plus the initial current from T0 up to T. This is the limits of integral. And number three, the power, it is equal to V multiplied by I. And number four, the energy, it is equal to integral of Li dI. This is what I need to know. And this, what I need to use for helping me solving any problem related to the inductor so far. I need to know these four equations, and I'm going to define four different equations for the capacitor as well. But before leaving that part, if I have different 
inductors connected in series. What's L total? And if I have different capacitors connected in parallel, what's L total? The inductor looks like the resistor. So if I have series inductors, L total is equal to the summation. If I have parallel inductors, one over L total is equal to one over L1 plus one over L2 and so on. So I can say series capacitors, sorry, series inductors. If I have some inductors connected in series like that, L1, L2, L3, V total, sorry, L total, or L equivalent is equal to summation Li, which is equal to what is I from one up to the number. This is not L multiplied by I. I is subscript here. So this is L subscript I, which is equal to L1 plus L2 plus L3 and so on. If I have inductors, connected in parallel, so I can say that if I have L1, L2, and L3 connected in parallel like that, this is L1, L2, L3, so I can say 1 over L equivalent is equal to 1 over L1 plus 1 over L2 plus 1 over L3 and so on. Now you can prove that if you want, like what we did in case of the resistor by using V total and I total. So what I need to know, six different equations similar to what I learned in case of the resistor. Number one, what is the voltage equation? V is equal to L di by dt. Number two, what is the current equation? I is equal to 1 over L integral of V dt plus the initial current. Number three, what is the power equation? P is equal to V times I. Number four, the energy equation or the work, it is equal to integral of P dt, whereas P is equal to V I. So it is I times L V I. And if I have some inductors connected in series, L total is equal to the summation. If I have some inductors connected in parallel, 1 over L total is equal to 1 over L1 plus 1 over L2 and so on. Any question for these simple equations? Let us see problem which is related to that story. So let us read here what he is asking about for that problem. So application of energy conversion, conversion from photovoltaic voltage to AC. He is telling me that we have that guy, which is PV cell, and we have that guy. So we have PV cells here and PV cells over there, and we have electronic switches, and there is a coil here, and the inductance is equal to 2 Henry, and the output voltage is defined by this graph. So the voltage across this guy is defined as VPV, which is 24. So this guy is 24, and this guy is negative 24. From 0 to 8 millisecond, and from 8 millisecond to 16 millisecond, it is defined as negative 24 volt. And then he is asking, he told me that I0 is equal to negative 48 milliampere. And then he is asking me to find the current equations 
and to draw the relation between the current and the time. We didn't start solving any problem, and I give you that problem. Final use equation, and you are giving me that problem in the final exam, and you didn't train me how you would solve it, right? Because from where I can read it, I didn't see before PD cells. I didn't see before AC voltage. Right? And you are giving me the initial current. I didn't see what is that. I didn't see those guys before. So how come you are asking me to solve such a problem? If I am in your situation, and it is the first time for me, I think I will not solve it. But if I sit for a couple of minutes and I started thinking, I will realize that I don't need all of these details. But why I give you all of these details to scale? This is what I would like to do, but you know the secret, don't be scared. So I will look to the problem. What you need, you would like to find the current. What is the equation of the current? What is the equation of the current? 1 over L. Do we have L? Yeah. Yes. Integral of V dt. Do we have V across the coil? Yeah, yeah. Plus the initial current. Do we have the initial current? Yeah. So solving the problem is very easy. I'm going to apply the equation only. I don't need to understand what is inside, but I will show you what I mean. But you don't need to understand what is inside that if you would like to solve the problem. So what you have to do is, you know the voltage, but the problem here is the voltage is defined by two different definitions. So I'm going to find the equation of the current two times based on the definition of the voltage. From zero up to eight millisecond, I have the definition of the voltage, which is 24. And from 8 millisecond to 16 millisecond, I have negative 24. So I'm going to solve this problem two times by plugging in my equation. I t is equal to 1 over L, which is given here to integral from 0 up to T. And the N for T is 8 milliseconds. For 24 dT plus the initial current, which is negative 48. Well, and I will solve the problem and I will find the current as a function of t. And I will try to repeat solving the problem again, starting from 8 millisecond. What I need is starting from 8 millisecond to find the initial current, the new initial current. Am I going to use the same initial current? No, this is the initial current at zero. I will substitute in the equation of i to find the new initial current and repeat solving the problem. This is the story. It is straightforward, and I'll, I'll show you that. But I would like you to understand what is inside that picture. If you try to look, but you don't need to solve the problem, you don't need. So what he gave me, he gave me electronic switch. This switch is working for a certain period of time. And this switch is working for a certain period of time. So he told me the output here is equal to 24. So I am expecting this guy is on and the closing this circuit while this guy is off. At that time, I have current here going in that direction to that coil. So the direction of the current is from right to left. That's why I have VO positive. This is from 0 to 8 millisecond. And from 8 millisecond to 16, this guy is opened and this guy is closed. At that time, the current will be in that direction from left to right. At that time, the voltage across this guy will be negative 24. You understood the graph, guys? But you don't need to understand it to solve the problem. You don't need. Now, let me 
took about how to calculate the current. What I need, I need to write the equation of the voltage. So for the voltage, VO, actually VO is defined by two definitions, 24 and negative 24. This is what he told me, 24 from 0 to 8 millisecond. So from 8 to 0 or from 0 to 8 millisecond. And after that, from 8 millisecond, up to 16 milliseconds, it is defined by another definition, which is 24 with negative sign. I would like to find the equation of the current. So the current is equal to what? I will write the equation of the current. The equation of the current is I of T equals 1 over L integral from 0 to T for V, not from 0, actually from T zero up to T for V of T DT plus the initial current. So for V out equals 24 between zero and eight millisecond. Don't forget he gave me the initial current, which is this guy. I of zero is equal to negative 48 milliamps. Yeah. I will substitute in this equation. So I will say I of T equals one over L. He gave me L, I forgot the value. It's two, yes, two. Integral from 0 up to t, not from 0 to 8, because I, I would like to find the equation. I would like to find the equation of the current. That's why I'm saying from 0 to t, not from 0 to 8. I know that the last time will be 8, but I don't like to find value. If you put from 0 to 8, you will find value. I don't like to find value. I would like to find equation for the current, to find the current at any time, from starting from 0, to any time. And the maximum time that I have for this equation will be 8 milliseconds. This is one of the common mistakes. All of you are putting here 8. Most of you are putting 8, which is totally wrong. From 0 to 8, because you would like to find the equation for the current. So integral from 0 to, uh, to t for v of t, what's v? It's 24. DT plus what is the initial current? It's negative 24 milliamps. Oh, sorry, 48 milliamps. The integral of 24 will be 24 T. So this guy will be 24 T. So half multiplied by 24 T minus 48 milli, this guy will be equal to 12 T minus 48 milli, which is 48 multiplied by 10 to the power negative three. This is the equation for I of T for the first period. The next step is to talk about the next period, starting from eight millisecond. So I'm going to substitute here by T is equal to 8 millisecond to find what? To find the initial current for the next period. So to find the initial current for the next period, Substitute in the above equation by T equals what? Equals what? 8 millisecond. Then I will find I of 8 millisecond. 
if you try to substitute in the above equation, you will find that I is equal to 12 multiplied by 8 milli minus 48 milli. This guy will be equal to 48 milli. Ampere. Then I will say for the period T between 8 millisecond and 16 millisecond. You can put equal or not. That's OK. So. I can say for that period I of T equals 1 over L integral from T1 up to T for V of T DT plus I of which T? T1, because this is the, the initial current for the next period. And T1 is equal to 8 millisecond. So this guy will be equal to 1 over L integral from 8 millisecond up to T for V of T. V of T is equal to what? Negative 24. Negative 24. dt plus i of t1 what's i of t1 is 48 millisecond uh, 48 milli uh, milliamps if you try to substitute in this equation you will find that this guy will be equal to negative uh, half times 24 so negative 12 Uh, times t from 8 millisecond, right, up to t plus 48 milliamps. So you will substitute in this guy, and you will find that I of t will be equal to negative 12 multiplied by t negative 8 milli plus 48 milli and based on that you can find the relation between the time and the current i in milli amps and the time in millisecond i think you started at t is equal to zero, the current was negative 48. So here we are starting from negative 48 milliamps. This is zero, and this is 8 millisecond, and this is 16 millisecond. So for 8 millisecond, I think the current was 48. So the current here was 48. And this is equation for of straight line. And you will substitute in this equation. By T is equal to 16. So if T is equal to 16 here, 16 minus 8. Will be 8 times 12. Will be. Eight times 12. 96. I think, uh, oh, I forgot to write half here. So one over L, which is two. Yes, it will be 48. You are right. So this guy will be negative 96 plus 48. So I of 16 millisecond will be. Negative. Yes, negative 48 milliamps. Substitute here. This guy, negative 48. So I'm expecting something like that. Am I right? And why this is straight line? Why it is not curved? Because the equation doesn't have T square. It's a straight line. That's why I connected those points. 
Any question for this problem? Like what you are seeing, I'm not doing something which is hard. I'm trying to substitute in the equations, but the problem is we are using the mathematical equations to find the integral and the derivatives. We are using the mathematical background that we have already learned to find the integral, and some few hate finding the integral, but you have to know it. Let us see another problem very quick. I think we still have five times, uh, five minutes, five minutes. Yes. Yeah. Did you finish that? Let us see another problem. Which is that? He is telling me here. Let me copy this guy. You know what? I need to copy this. OK, I'll talk about the problem here. The source current is I L of T. So he gave me I for T greater than zero. Find V L of T. He, he doesn't like me to continue. Okay, that's okay. So you are not seeing anything right now. <laughs> and it will take a couple of uh, minutes to start warming up. So probably I will not talk about it today. Probably I'll talk about it next class. Uh, but before leaving, before before leaving, what is it? Uh, let me stop recording.